Here. Board Member Matthew Menza. Here. Board Member Talis Salamatian. City Council Member Marshall Martin. You have a quorum. All right, great. Thank you. Um, start with a public invited to be heard. Seeing there's no one here, I'm still going to open it for formality's sake. And then we'll close the first public invited to be heard and move on to approval of the May 9th, 2024 minutes. Does anyone have any comments on the minutes? Yeah. Vice Chair Jordan first. Uh, that was on line 12, page one. Um, oh, I was just going to note that uh, Marsha came in before we were done, right? No, she didn't. She didn't come at all? Okay. That no, was, she was in the other meeting. I was imagining it. She was in the other meeting next door, and okay, we talked I to her thought, after oh, the maybe meeting, we but she did not officially okay. attend the meeting. Line four on page two, it says, Vice Chairperson Jordan stated that renters will be, I have no authority to state that, but I would say Vice President Jordan stated council discussed adding that renters will be required to sign the abrogation easement. They talked about... Um, having people sign it not just at closing but that it might be included in um, rental agreements mm -hmm. since that's looking to be some high density if they develop that so uh, stated council discussed adding okay. that renters would be required thank you thank you Levi did you have something too I had line 30 um, stated there have been 17 complaints there have been uh, Page on one. page one, line 30, sorry, um, there have been 17 household complaints, not complaints total, so it should be household complaints from households. 17 households. Thank you. Anyone else notice anything? If not, I would take a motion to approve the minutes as amended. I move we approve the minutes as amended. There is a motion. Is there a second? Moved and seconded. I'll second it. Okay, I've got double seconds. <laughs> Any discussion? Do you, do you get dessert? Yet? I would love some dessert, but no, <laughs> just two seconds. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you, motion carries. Updates from the airport manager, Levi, floor is yours. Uh, got some quick updates for you. Not a whole lot going on besides paperwork lately, but that's a good thing, right? Um, fire inspections officially kicked off um, at the airport. Really good response from those back so far, mostly people are really excited. I get a lot of positive response because we did the um, fire extinguisher. We paid for the uh, research tag on them. A lot of positive response from that. In fact, so much to the point where we're going to go ahead and do it again halfway through too for the people that missed it. Um, it was a minor budget item for the airport and people really seem to like that. It seems like the biggest headache of them getting that was like, you know, finding a spot to go to, take it, and we just do it all at the airport for them. So we'll probably be doing that. That's going well. Um, wildlife fence. I did see today that the procurement department finally got a um, bid package out to the engineers. The engineers were reading that when I talked to them earlier today, and they're going to forward that directly for me to the FAA. Um, the FAA did say that they wanted to look at that prior to uh, the city putting it out because they were concerned that, you know, the city hasn't done that before. And so they wanted to make sure that they looked at that before they put it out. So that should be finishing up. Hopefully that was finished up today behind closed doors, if not very, very soon. I know that it's headed off the FAA to make them happy. So hopefully that makes them happy with securing our grants for this year and not having to put them off another year. Um, that's kind of the feeling I got from talking with our FAA representative, Todd Minich. So that's very good. Uh, let's see. I will skip air show for so Melinda can talk about the details of that here in a little bit. Um, we have now gone through two MOs at the airport, super happy. Um, so much cleaner than last year. Um, Clemente, uh, he's got a new company um, he's starting this year who's doing that, super responsive. Um, I called him, he missed some things, I called him and he was out later that day fixing it all at the airport and it looks really, really good. So happy with that. Um, earlier today, completed the first quarter stormwater inspection on the airport. That went really, really well. Stormwater people are, are super excited. Um, they said we're the only ones that have been responsive as a, <laughs> as a department for actually correcting the issues. So they were happy with that. Um, so that's completed for now. Um, 
kind of tied in with that, kind of not. Um, still ongoing, the master uh, drainage survey on the airport. Um, just as a refresher, master drainage survey is being done so we can officially, or eventually, excuse me, in a bubble, um, eventually do some development on the airfield. That's kind of the last unknown if someone wanted to come in and do hangers. We had several people in kind of show interest in developing hangers and it always kind of got hung up in the planning spot where they said, well, we don't know what, you know, drainage we would require you to do prior to building hangers, doing a master's master drainage survey to make sure that comes. So that should be finishing up this month is what it's looking like. They're on track. They're doing some of the fat last modeling now. Um, we were going to have one of our closer to the end meetings this Tuesday, but we had too many people on vacation. So we kind of shuffled that off to next week. But I'll know more about that next week. Um, I think that's, oh, um, CAOA conference. Um, recently returned last week from the Colorado Airport Operators uh, Conference. They held it in Vail this year, which was really nice because all the airports, you know, kind of went to a central spot in the state. Um, so people were pretty happy with that. And it was Vail, too. So people were happy with that. Um, but. Uh, very interesting CAOA this time. Uh, much legislation has come out. House Bill 1235 was signed by the governor. Um, we've talked about that here before. Um, that was um, the bill that's essentially um, the, the, the main point of that was the transition away from leaded fuel and the Colorado initiative towards that. Um, not a whole lot of, of input on it. And people are still digesting it to figure out what's going on with it. Um, from the outside, it seems to not have a whole lot of teeth to potentially hurt small airports. It's lining itself pretty much with the FAA's goal of having unleaded fuel by 2030. So uh, it, it very much feels like the FAA was kind of trying, the state was aligning themselves with FAA to, you know, maybe perhaps take care of some concerns while still uh, pursuing or uh, copying the federal government's kind of stated goals is what it looks like. It does... Um, I want to say it gives you a hundred dollar credit for trans for getting a supplemental type certificate for switching your plane to unleaded fuel gas. Now, um, it pr it uh, prioritizes. I think it's top ten percent of funding for transition to unleaded fuel projects from airports. So they're supposed to get priority to airports that are seeking funded for for transitioning to unleaded fuel. This is a quick summary of that. Also, the um, uh, Airport Reauthorization Act was signed by uh, Biden too, and that's that gets into our AIP, into our our yearly grants, our entitlement funding for the airport. Again, uh, that's brand new. The FAA said, "Don't ask us any questions." We just barely read it, um, but it's looking like that potentially be some more money for us. I know that they upped the FAA's coverage for that was I think it was ninety five percent now instead of the ninety, so an extra five percent, nothing else, plus more funds. Um, in there. Um, kind of big news at the conference was that there was a whole bunch of grant assurances that were originally recommended for that that didn't necessarily make the cut in the end. So we as airports aren't quite subjected to the additional legal headaches that we might otherwise be. So that's good. Also, uh, again, very, very new. Can't talk too much about that just from point of no one really knows how it's, it's kind of pan out quite yet. Um, other things at the conference. Um, Try, I should have. Oh, I didn't bring my conference notes. So I apologize. I printed them all off just for this, and then I forgot. Um, I sat in on the hangar development, logically, because we've been dealing with that, and that was an interesting. Um, talked about some leasing issues uh, with uh, Centennial Airport and those presentations. Um, what other big things came out of it? And Harrison, when he talks, he can talk. Harrison was there also. He can add to anything that I might have missed. Um, I there was, of course, uh, talk about the um, lawsuit going on between Boulder County and Jefferson County. And uh, for those of you who haven't heard, um, Eric, I'm trying to think of his name, Dahl. Eric Dahl will be the new airport manager down at Rocky Mountain Metropolitan. Um, he uh, starts, actually, the 17th of this month. So I think, what's today? Okay, so he starts Monday then. Uh, he'll be starting down there at Rocky Mountain Metro. Um, that's a good conference roundabout update. I think that's what I got for airport updates. Were there any questions? I'm sorry, I should have paused for questions through there. <laughs> I had an energy drink earlier. <laughs> any questions from anybody? 
Finn? Okay. I don't have anything to add on the conference, Levi, beyond okay. what you covered. I mean, I'm there for my day job, so my objective's a little different <laughs> a little than different. Levi's is. Harrison's uh, objective is smoothing. That's what it is. <laughs> and, and my objective is commercial service airports. Let's say that. Um, yeah. It's there for a reason. All right. Any questions for Levi? Otherwise, we'll move on from updates from the airport manager. I don't have any information items listed. Um, so our action item for the evening is the annual report. Um, you all have a copy of this in front of you. I apologize you didn't get it until yesterday. I did not compile this until yesterday. This looks a little different than some of our past years um, in that it is shorter. It covers the you know, kind of bare minimum we're required to do to the council, which is really that work activities page. Um, and then I have included just a couple things that are kind of we include the economic impact because I always like tying what the airport does back to dollars in the community and highlighted the air show and expo. So it's on the record with them as well. Um, I would love any feedback, edits, typo corrections, anything you see in there. Um, or just general discussion. I'd kind of open it up there if anyone has anything. Vice Chair Jordan. I didn't see any edits. Um, I thought it was really well done. Congratulations. And can Levi then add on, do you need to do the number of operations and more of those, um, you know, the financial picture from the city side? Can you add that on to the end of this now? Uh, we potentially could. Um, I guess that kind of depends on what you guys want to see the vision look like. There's going to have to be two, kind of two reports anyway because okay, the city has their own format that they like it okay in. okay so there'll be i will also do that and it might you know a nice thing might be eventually once that's completed and i should make a note of that to touch base with the transportation department about um when they want to do that um is we could just maybe put that on the end as mm -hmm. you know the the nice report and then the official yeah. breakdown of how the city likes to see it too something yeah. like that because I know the that your annual report is looking back and recapping what has happened, and that this, I appreciate that we put, you know, what has happened, what measure it and show the progress, yeah. and then also show what the future is yeah. looking like. So, very well done. Mm -hmm. well, thank you. Yeah, very good. Yeah. Any other comments? So this is a requirement that we have to um, approve by the middle of the year. So we're a whopping 17 days ahead of schedule here. Um, if there are no other comments, I would take a motion to approve and you know have this be ready to submit. Oh, sorry. Hold on one second. Um, Dan, did you have a question or are you going to make a motion? Um, I have a question. All right. So Dan, hold on. Let me turn on your mic. You were there first. <laughs> I'll get to you. So we all know that we're trying to attract more business revenue to Venus Brand. Um, has anybody had a discussion about what type of businesses we would target for that, that increased revenue? There's been discussions in the past with the Economic Development Committee and with the city in general about targeting. And if you look into some of the documents that are on the airport's website too, like the Southwest Development Plan, it goes into that a little bit too on kind of what they're looking at. Um, the short answer to that is essentially a mix. Um, of course, there's a hangar shortage on the front range, so T-hangers are always going to be a point. But traditionally speaking, in the last five years or so in, in uh, Colorado, the most profitable hangers have been box hangers and stuff like that. And having said all that, that's just hangar space. Um, ultimately, it would be great to attract more businesses and stuff like that towards the airport, too, because then you're also looking at multipliers and, you know, generating, uh, you know, bringing money into the community and supporting, you know, creating jobs and stuff like that. So that's also a big goal. Um, that's kind of something that the, 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 I guess, short answer is, is the hope it's going to be a mix. And then the question becomes, you know, how do we get to the mix that we want? How do we attract people to come and stuff like that? So the, the baby steps to that are getting to the point where we actually can start doing this stuff. So that's what all the surveys for and stuff like that. Any thoughts to what, what it would take to attract more commercial flights into the airport? Into commercial the airport? flights? Yeah. yeah, there's never going to be any commercial flights probably at this airport. Um, 
charter flights, um, uh, stuff like that. Yeah, that would be great. That's you know that's the ultimate thing that we're really trying to focus on is in improving the face of the airport, making it you know place that a destination where uh, individuals and also importantly their pilots you know want to fly because that is a part of the decision making when they come mm -hmm. to it. You know, what's it look like when you fly in? What amenities does it have? Stuff like that. All of that's big ticket item talking points for sure. Yeah, that was that was my next observation. It would require uh, more enhanced facilities in mm -hmm. the MPO. Yep, for sure. That's a that's a big point of the discussion. Can you give any FEO update? Uh, not at this moment. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Can you hit the button and then I'll turn you, turn them off. Can I do it right? Yeah, now you're good. Yeah, um, commercial operations, part 135 is commercial operations, turn yeah, flights. True, good point. Um, part 121 is obviously airline type, mm -hmm. on demand, uh, on time. But the big, the big long pole in the tent is the fact that we have a 4,900 foot runway. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're not going to get any more part 121 or 135 operations in here without getting that runway to 6,000 feet. Yeah, not it, and you're you're correct. Yeah, and as long as we keep building around the airport like we are, we're never going to get that because the FAA is not going to allow it. I agree. So yeah. I'm kind of under, trying to understand what what we're doing in terms of the the manager and the yeah. the advisory board in terms of being assertive about that particular issue. And that's something that there's the, this continuous conversation about too. It would be certainly ideal. Uh, that m much length of runway would kind of put us at the point where we would be at the ideal capacity for pilots not having to consider so much the takeoff weight and stuff like that and come in. They fill up with fuel and fly out of here. Unfortunately, right now we're in a point where um, the FAA doesn't want us to have a longer runway. The city doesn't want us to have a longer runway. The people who want us to have a longer runway are sitting in this room. Um, so it's it's a delicate conversation because we want it to happen so we don't want to burn bridges and stuff like that but so we don't want to preclude it from happening but we got to kind of take a look at the, the environment the way it is right now and as we move forward try to find the most positive way of getting there what i continue to say and i still think is true is to get to that point we have to have a very good partner so to get that point we have to have a reason to have that runway extension so i got to have Someone says, hey, I'm moving my drone business, or I've, more to the point, I've already moved my drone business from, you know, Virginia, we're here, we need this runway, guys, come on, build this. At that point, I can start motivating the city, which I can then potentially start motivating the FAA, because if they say, okay, you're right, you know, that business could certainly use that kind of runway length, then I can actually get grant money behind me, I can get city money behind me, and I can get stuff built. So I have a business. I'm moving my airplane to Greeley because mm -hmm. I don't have a long enough runway here. And I so, want to start a business. I mean, my business is starting and moving. So mm -hmm. uh, aerospace flight test services with a jet, and I can't operate it out of here in the summertime. So there's one data point for you if you need to use that. But Yeah, that is a good one. Um, yeah. I, I think future agendas we might want to talk about having a FAA rep come down and talk to us. We can talk about that on the next one here, Yeah, and number seven. But I'd yeah. love to hear from the FAAs tell us that they don't want to lengthen our, air, our runway because all over the country with federal money, little airports are getting their runways lengthened all over the place. I mean, I'm sure they would come and talk to you. They, they've usually been pretty – I've I had them offer several times to come and talk to city council. So I'm sure they probably would – would come down and talk to the airport advisory board too. If we set something up long enough in the future, we could probably get them to come visit with us. Yeah, yeah I mean, it, Matt, this is frustrating. We've talked about this yeah. off and on for the entire time I've been on the board. The city is not in favor of it, despite it being the official master plan for the airport. Um, despite it being on the approved master plan that the FAA would fund it, the FAA is not interested. I've had the conversations with them as well. Yeah. Um, I think the state would like to see it, the state aviation aeronautics department. I and, would and, say, and I'm not, yeah. None of this is disagreeing with you in any way, shape, or form. It's just I think the FAA doesn't have the appetite to spend that money, basically. Yeah. Well, I, yeah. So I, I, I actually 
had an interesting conversation because there for a while it was looking like they were going to make us do a new master plan. The official kind of unofficial word is that they kind of aren't pushing us so hard for that now because it looks like the city is doing something about our zoning. And on top of that, the lawsuit came out from Boulder County against Jefferson County. And the FA is trying to be a little hands off as far as uh, public exposure to stuff like that. Right now, they don't want more things um, going on at the moment. Um, during that conversation with the FA, it also came out. Um, you know, I said, well, at least we've already got the runway extension in our master plan. And it kind of said, well, you know, we don't know if we would approve that to continue on into your next master plan. So the next big fight is going to just be keeping the current runway extension we have in the master plan to move on to the next master plan. Yeah. Yeah. Any other comments, questions? Motion on the annual report. Vice Chair Jordan. I move we accept the uh, 20, 2023 airport annual report as it is written. Second. Moved and seconded. Oh, it was a second. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Um, any further discussion? All in favor? Um, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Annual report approved. All right. We're already on to final public invited to be heard. Cooking. I open the floor. Seeing no one, we'll close the final public invited to be heard and board council and staff comments. Board members, what else is on your mind tonight? Or want to go back to anything that was unsatisfying that, we, that already was talked about? <laughs> let's, yeah, let's do that. Mr. Menza. Yep, sorry, I'm the new guy here. So I'm going to ask a lot of weird questions. But since we kind of dove into that, um, first of all, about Boulder, the FAA has been very, very blunt about um, – I've read two of the letters that the FAA sent to Boulder – very blunt from the FAA saying they absolutely support Boulder Airport existing and Boulder has no right to claim that land because it's in, per in perpetuity. So that, I don't know if you guys have seen that letter, but um, pretty blunt mm -hmm. letter from the FAA that I can I can send it to you, Melinda. It's pretty, uh, pretty impressive. Uh, anyway, I just think in the future we talk about, and it sounds like you guys have been around the circle with this many times, but... I'm just having a hard time understanding how there's we spent all these bills were passed in the last three years with the federal government tr trillions and literally hundreds of billions for transportation and um, between grant money and fed money I can't believe that we can't get some now if you're saying that it's because the city council and the mayor doesn't want to support it then that's different but I'm pretty certain there's a ton of grant money and federal money. And the FAA has made it very clear they're very much in favor of supporting um, growing their infrastructure for aviation. So I'm just confused on that part. Maybe we can tackle that in future agendas somehow, break that down. But I think that's something we need to get on public record in terms of discussing that openly as a group. Because this, this airport's dying. It's got to start growing. And, and so, you know, when you give a 20-year lease to people, nobody wants to come here. They give 50, 60-year leases in every other state. And so there, there's issues, and I just want to see us talk about them so we can see if there's anybody that can help us with them. So if that makes sense. And there's some discretionary grant money that is out there. In fact, uh, something – I think you weren't here at the last meeting, but we talked about we did apply for – a. Point seven, you know, a seven hundred and fifty thousand dollar discretionary grant with the FAA. Um, gosh, I guess it's been about a month or so ago. Um, that was an interesting discretionary grant um, because it came out and the, it was an open and close. I want to say it was like three weeks or something like that. So they opened it. We had to rush out to the engineers, get a discretionary grant all written up, and then shoot it out. That one was focusing on green technology transition if you will so we wrote up a discretionary grant proposal for transition to led lighting 
on the airfield, which I think eventually is something we're going to need anyway for no other reason than the fact that I can't get parts for the, our old incandescent system now. You can't get them. They're outdated. No one uses them that's, that's larger airport. Um, so cross fingers, knock on wood, that we're an excellent contender for that. Um, trying to be super friendly with the FAA who makes that decision. Um, I think the fact that we're, we seem to be moving towards rezoning the end of runway 29 is, will hopefully shine favorably on us when they're going through those grants to decide who gets that and who doesn't. Um, we'll see. But um, yeah, I highly recommend. That's actually a chunk of what I do. I'm always trying to keep my eyes open for discretionary grant monies out there. We're good for this airport. And I highly recommend anybody hears anything to reach out to me and let me know too. I think it's, it's a kind of a testament to um, how t tuned in the city actually is a little bit. The day that grant came out, of course, all my you know all my airport folks called me, so I knew about it. But two people from the city also reached out to me and called me because they had gotten alerts about it also. So actually very impressed with the city on that one. When that money came out, they said, "Hey, there's this you know giant grant coming out." So that's I guess that covers some of the grant parts of it anyway. And I guess while I'm talking, I would also um, include, I think it's great, um, Dan was talking about what kind of businesses that we want to attract to the airport. I think that'd be a great topic item to sit down and just have an open forum talk about with the, with the airport advisory board too. It's like, hey, let's talk about who, is there people that we as an airport want to go after? You know, what do we want that mix to look like? Uh, so as I'm moving forward with the city and the planning department and stuff like that, and they're all talking about that, that we can have input from the advisory board meeting too, would be great. I just want to, two things on the same topic. Okay. Um, I'm glad the city told you. Yeah. The grants has been an ongoing point of frustration for me beyond the airport that the city did not have historically a really good way to track these, apply for them. Um, this is something Marsha and I have discussed in detail that she's pushed the city to do. So I'm actually really glad yeah. that they flagged this one. Um, mind you, it's $750,000 and not a new runway, but yeah. I'm going to be happy with a baby step at the moment as something. Um, on Boulder, at the conference, I sat next to an attorney who work, who's working on that deal. Oh, really? He would not tell me any details about it, <laughs> but he did say that some point next month, it's likely there's likely to be action in, at the Boulder City Council. Okay. That's all he would tell me. Um, lawyers care about confidentiality, apparently, but um, I do think it's really interesting to keep an eye on it, and I'm glad you brought it up. Vice Chair Jordan. Further to the conversation on funding and decisions and things like that, um, we had a business uh, that wanted to be based at our airport. Their aircraft were here, and then they were up in Loveland, and they ended up in Boulder. They built a huge hangar, and they have a big investment there. And then they were bought out by a bigger firm. And when they it looked, you know, when everybody was talking about scraping the Boulder Airport, that was the first company I thought of because mm. they built a huge yeah. hangar and have a huge operation there and they wanted to be here um it was the issue with the leases before we got the lease language mm -hmm. uh, the lengths of leases changed and they'd already made their decision um but that was one as smuckers uh we definitely were interested in seeing smuckers operate out of our airport um but the runway wasn't long enough so it was the same same issue so my question is always what do I, who don't have the pleasure of working in this every day, um, you know, what do I know or what can I do to help with this? You know, and I say that, I'll say that for the greater we here. Uh, it's always a question of what can we do to help push the extension along or decide we are going to go for the extension, not for the development, because we've got to have more space, obviously, with that extension. We've got to widen as well. So we, the fear is that we do the build and then we've boxed ourselves in um, and can't do the extension um, or add additional services at the airport. And somebody who knows how all that works much uh, better than I do mm -hmm. to guide us and to save, you know, if you want development on the airport, you need to go down this path. If you want to have a longer runway, you need to go this path. We all know that, that a better FBO is that's mm -hmm. just a an easy oh, yeah. one that's low hanging fruit as far as a decision goes if we could get a, a <coughs> signature or a shelter or somebody with a you know beautiful new facility okay we could you know we could get at least attract the jets that are already coming in we could attract more of that but it's really to do it the master plan had the extension and that was 
that was it. There, we didn't talk about the FBO. We just mm-hmm. talked about that runway extension. Yeah. And that's a 2012 master plan. Yep. And, um, and it was supposed to have happened by now. It was already supposed to have been done. And, uh, and I joined the board when it was going to, it got pushed to, I think, 2024. It got pushed and I was, I couldn't believe it and thought, oh God, we're never going to see it. But that was actually a firm date at one point. And uh, there was a more firm date, like 2021. So it's been out there. There's yeah. land at the end that we don't own. And there, you know, there's a whole lot that goes into it. So it's no small feat. But really, I think as a, as a board, if we're going to, ponder this it's do we want to see just more hangers and we we can bring in all the orphans from the other airports or do we want that extension and we want to prioritize that and just to figure you know get some direction with professional guidance the other thing i noticed was um the mountain wave came out this afternoon and he um davy lane reported on a lot of stuff from the meetings uh-huh, yeah and he showed um that the schools that got funding and it was mm-hmm. all pretty small but it was interesting to me that they featured that and it was the different schools in their programs mm-hmm. something else to ponder is we have the innovation center they are teaching ground school there and i actually hooked them up with cdot did so you? they good. applied for okay that. good mm-hmm. and so for them to get the benefit of that kind of thing but also again to the bigger picture is the fact that our school district has an aviation program uh, and mm-hmm. and then I always am going to go back to LPC that we own our own utility. We have the we have the best petri dish that mm-hmm. anybody could come up with. Um, and so, how do we make all that work for us? We've really got a lot of assets, a lot of good things going for us. That do we focus on the education piece in the school district, and do we make them a um, a partner on the field that is that draw for education money and things like that? So that's the stuff I don't work in all day, and I don't know how you get it done. I can think about it, but I don't know how to get it done. But I do feel like we we have a uh, an Easter basket full of goodies that if figuring out how to coalesce that into um, getting us ready for the pageant to say, you know, we can sing and we can dance and we got nice eyes. And so, um, you know, what what can we do with what we've got? And owning our utility, having nothing but country at one end of the runway and having plans to protect us at the other, we're really in a good position to uh, continue to figure out what we would like to see and really come up with it, but tie in some of the other stuff. And you reminded me, and talking about the Innovation Center, which, by the way, is amazing if you guys haven't been out there to see it. But I want to go off on my little soapbox, and I don't know if Matt knows, but I want to let him know. that. Have you seen that plane they're building? It was at the – so do you, they're, they're not going to let them ever fly it? Did you hear that? No, I didn't know that. So I wanted to let you know that because that's kind of like your thing, right? The, yeah, so the school system at the moment said that they'll never let them fly it. They're never going to sell it. Nothing's going to happen with it. They're going to hang it as a display. And I, that's, yes, thank you. <laughs> that just makes my heart hurt that they went. And if you look at the way they did that plane, it is absolutely beautiful. And I th- just think it would just be a great thing if that, it in some incarnation, if that plane could fly someday, would be amazing. But I'm sorry to go off on my soapbox there. Yeah, but yeah, the innovation system wonderful. All everything you said, I think, would be really great talking points for like if we do in depth when we're looking at businesses, when we're looking at attraction stuff like that, would be you know great things to talk about. Yep, Mr. Meester. A uh, quick question. Um, it was mentioned that we may not be attracting businesses based on the fact that we have a twenty-year lease uh, with a city. Um, and I may be wrong on this, but it's my understanding that the city also has the right to terminate that lease agreement with fairly short notice. Now, if, if that's incorrect, please correct me. That's uh, the the lease. So every lease is its own negotiated contract, essentially. So the actually the starting point for a city the lease, the boilerplate, if you will, uh, for our airport is thirty years, actually, and that and then it'll vary for any way up to the maximum FAA allowable. Uh, 50 years and that's something else that they kind of talked about and they punctuated again at the conference this year was that the ex- the maximum allowable is 50 years for a contract that's something that we would probably reserve for fbo's anyone doing major um, kind of investment into the airport would be a negotiating point 
Um, I forget. Yeah. So yes, the does that answer the question? I forget where I was going. Well, what's what's <laughs> what's the city's termination rights in terms of time frame? Uh, Do they come to us and say, "Hey, you've got thirty days." You, they can't just automatically terminate any lease whenever they want. Um, that would be a huge legal quagmire uh -huh. uh, that no one would want to do. Um, there's certain provisions in that lease that essentially put it up for, you know, if you're not paying your rent, if et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but the lease is a, it's a contract. It's a legal agreement. The, you're held to the terms and so is the city. Yeah. Well, I, I guess I table this for future <coughs> conversation. Yeah. But if we truly feel that the limitations of our lease agreement with the city is prohibiting additional business from attracting additional business here um, then perhaps that's something we can put under discussion to see if we can lengthen whatever the period is or the termination time so i i mean i we can talk about that but i can tell you right now that i don't have a problem doing a 50-year lease but it's all an individual negotiation with each individual person so, so yeah. mr menz I, I will get to you yeah. i promise yeah. city has a hard cap at 30 years so, so you yeah. can do thirty plus twenty or something, but I just want yeah to, you know, the yeah exactly there you go. I'm not so concerned about the, yeah. the term time frame. Everything it's else a termination is time frame. Yeah, understood. That's, that's so you're absolutely Mr. Yeah, correct. Yeah. So full disclosure, my wife and I tried to buy the FBO, and um, we had escrow money transferred, and we were fine with the seller. The city gave us a lease that was no businessman or woman would ever sign. It was a 20-year lease, um, and yeah, I have the copy of the, the mm -hmm. lease for you. You can look at it. Be share, glad to share it with anybody. And the lease was extremely restrictive. Um, they had the right at any time to terminate the lease and to take all my assets. My wife and I said, there's no way. We can't invest millions of dollars here with this kind of lease. And that is a consistent theme for anybody who wants to try to buy that FBO. That's the fact. There's several other buyers that have tried to do the same thing. But at least my experience with the city is that they're not interested in selling the FBO. Or they just didn't want my wife and I to be there. But either way, um, it was a 20-year lease, and there was nothing in that lease that would give my wife and I a warm fuzzy that we had any support or it was worth investing millions of dollars to put another hangar and grow the FBO. And so I went and bought a jet instead. And now I have a toy. And so, um, and it's cool, it's fun. But that is the truth and the fact that we need to figure out what we're doing on this board and how we can examine that particular lesson and see how we can help people in the future invest in long run. And Levi... Unless you had an input on that, it was the city attorney and the other, you know, and, and the other folks that made the decision on that that lease, despite the fact that they said they would give us a 30-year lease initially. So, you know, and we pulled out because we didn't want to spend our, our attorneys going back and forth. How many months is it going to go back and forth, attorneys, and how many bills am I going to get from my attorney every month? It just it wasn't worth it. So too much heartburn. So something to think about. We can talk about that offline too, but that's a problem. And so, yes, sir, you're correct that – we're not getting the business we want because there's, and I heard some rumors about uh, Mr. What's uh, the gentleman who owns Oscar Blues. He tried to do the same thing. You guys might be more familiar with it than I am, but and I don't know all the nuances there, but um, you know, he's a much more successful businessman than I am, and he wasn't able to do anything. So we need to come to Jesus at some point with some of these things here and see what we can do to, to move it, move the ball forward. So. Any other comments from any board members? Melinda Air Show update. Oh, yes. <laughs> How did you let that get past? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're having an air show September 14th, and um, we're moving into where everything is dropping in now, and we'll move into. Uh, publicity and all that next um, I've asked them to give us a couple of more weeks to line out 
the food trucks and some of the things that people will recognize. We can tell them about all the air show acts, but they're not necessarily going to recognize those. But they will recognize the food trucks and the, you know some of the vendors and things like that. Um, we're on a last push for sponsors, trying to get a couple of sponsors so that I don't worry about having to clean up the bills at the end on my own credit card. We, um, with our air show boss, got the um, FAA Form 7711 to file today. Finally, that's got all the shows. It's got our emergency response plan, which was um, a, uh, a pretty big lift um, to get that done, but it was, uh, it was good. It felt good to get it done, and I've got to get it to the city now. And then um, we've got um, uh, a yak. Well, we've got Red Thunder, a um, three airship yak show. Um, the Air Force is sending a glider. They just committed to that the other day. I'm looking at Levi. He knows all this. Um, we've got Dagmar Kress, and she's going to be flying the, I always have to think about it, the Game Bird. Um, they just got a new, is it a Game Bird? Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I always think of sports with that one. Um, we've got Freeman. So she'll be flying that. She was going to be flying the pits, but it sounds like she'll fly the Game Bird. Um, Bob Freeman, Freeman Air Shows, is going to be there. Um, Alan Cook, and I can't remember what Alan flies, but we have locked in our, our paid air show partners, um, and then the waivers have been applied for. And I'm back to going through the UOPP. It's time to meet with police and fire, have them look at through our emergency response plan from their perspective. This was written for the FAA mostly, but it encompassed everything I need to do with them. And then we've talked to economic development to, um, they're going to promote it further to get people to come in and stay the weekend and spend the night. Um, we got Wings Over the Rockies, Exploration of Flight finally um, locked in. Some people who kind of penciled us in a long time ago but had not ever committed. Mm -hmm. um, I've really been wrestling with the AV band shell entrance, all those really tough logistics. And I think I've made a decision today. I was working with Recess Factory today, and they did our last show, and they are anxious to do this one. And they help us with the... Um, fence the crowd line fencing the mm. entrance the parking they manage the parking um it's a big lift and they like doing it and so it's and it would be exhausting for our team and our volunteers um so the, he's going to come out to the field and have another look around and refresh his memory look f how we can extend our parking further i was um in the past we were sort of we had an air show and we let people on the field know we were going to have an air show that might impact them that day. This one, because of the hours and what we're doing, we've got to just say there is an air show and you are impacted. Mm -hmm. Then we can go further down the hangar rows for parking, kind of spread that out more um, on the back side of the field. And then I'm not sure how, I've got to find out how to ask if we could use the space across the street. Um, if that's even a possibility to the with east? the county, with where the uh, farm was that the county bought. Oh, the county yeah, bought, okay. Yeah. And then um, micromodal transportation is supposed to start in July, I think, in the city. Um, so that may be an option for us to use that to shuttle people. So there's some things that are still kind of on the fringe that'll come in later as it's, you know, when it's appropriate. And then. Um, We've got invitations out. We've got meetings with the, all the cadets and explorers. Mm -hmm. So we're really into that. Um, it's time to, to sign up, commit, get head counts, figure out how many T-shirts to order, things like that. Have you been in touch with women in aviation? Uh, 99s are in. The 99s. And then they're going to partner with women in aviation. They've been talking well, they are. about partnering. Okay, yeah, good. Yeah. So I presented to their board on Tuesday night and uh, did a, uh, ask for volunteers as well, but then they're going to uh, present. They've got two other things that month, so they may have a skeleton crew, okay. but they're starting to partner with WIA um, on other uh, events and share a table. And I see the vendor list is filling out beautifully, Kevin's mm -hmm. uh, landing vendors, and, um, and then I've made offers to some of these other groups as well. ATC, uh, Russ is wrangling a group to come over and do the... Um, ATC portion, and so we're, it's all, the, the, the Lego pieces haven't quite snapped in, 100%, not 100%, 50%, <laughs> um, but they're all hanging, they're all okay. out on the floor, and we're putting them together, and so we're there, we're at that pivotal point I've been waiting to feel like we were at. And I would add that I've been bouncing back a little bit before, 
pushing risk to make sure that they have everything they yeah. need. That yeah. sent four that you sent me back us. that they really wanted. Yeah. I sent, I keep bugging Doug, and he last time he sent back said, "Hey, do they have their individual?" But so far, I, I keep asking him to make sure that for, that form looks good. This form is what you want, right? And he hasn't said we've missed anything, so it's on risk really right now good. until he comes back and tells me something that form is wrong. Also, the FA form that finally got signed today yes which is awesome i went ahead and i also forwarded that to my contact at the ado oh. um so they have no excuses for not saying that that form hit their desk uh, before the three months Good. that they request yeah so i also made sure that that got there too so Fantastic. we should be covered bases on getting that paperwork in good Good. And then we have a meeting uh, Saturday morning at Levi's office. He'll leave the key for me. And um, it's a more of a work session this time. And then next month, I think I'll get the fire station. And then we'll bring in, uh, bring back in police fire, uh, a couple of other, uh, other organizations that have expressed interest in coming to the meetings and hearing more. Um, so I think next month I'll try for a bigger meeting. August feels like it's going to be too late. Uh, at that point, we're really shirt sleeves up and working. But um, Recess Factory is going to be our, our backbone for the fencing and security and a lot of stuff. So he's got he's working out the bids so that I can figure out how much, and then I've got to really dial in the budget now and uh, see where we're at. So the work continues, working session this Saturday at 9 at Levi's office. And then um, if we need to do something in the evening or a different time, um, to attract other people that want to come to that kind of a meeting. But as you know, they're working sessions, so we aren't doing fancy presentations and stuff. We're just going around the room and moving the ball forward. And uh, again, we're always looking still for sponsors, um, donors. Um, we have had a donor for lunch that's going to do lunch for the volunteers. Um, we always need water, drinks, you know, easy stuff that Walmart, Sam's Club, Costco, any realtor or anybody who wants to slap their stickers on stuff, um, we welcome that. We'll always take that. And But otherwise, yeah. And then I did go ahead and pick a date for September 26, 2026. <laughs> I had something I had to look at for that. And then I'm talking to Recess Factory. We've been quoting 3800 on our show, and we were over 5000 They did parking tickets, and uh, we were over 5000 I thought we were. And then I had been told, no, we were about 3,800, and they said, no, we were between five and 6,000. For the, what they take cars, uh, they do an average of three per car. Okay. And uh, they did tickets uh, for the cars, and so he did confirm. So 5,000 is probably a conservative. I need to say five to 7,000 probably. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. I'm glad you're on all that. Um, Mr. Dean. Only thing I have to add. Uh, also, uh, the Coloradans are locked in for the air show as well for the displays for, for the kickoff of the car show. So they have. I did talk to them, and they did have their meeting, and they reached out to Melinda. So sure. that's a go as well. So thank you, Malcolm. Mr. Shook. I just wanted to let everybody know. Last Saturday, uh, the EAA chapter six forty eight had oh, a yeah. pancake breakfast. Yeah, yeah. Swap meet and fly in, and it was absolutely w incredible. Yeah. A lot of uh, the community showed up. I think we served over 400 <coughs> breakfasts, and um, the swap meet was was uh, encouraging. It wasn't great, but it was okay. And then we had um, raffle items, and it went real well. Yeah, and I would echo that. They did a beautiful job. It was really good. The food was good, and the atmosphere was great, and it was wonderful. It was like a tiny little air show. Well, so that pancake breakfast is what we'll have. Um, yep. They're going to do ours as well. And that was a uh, – they were warming up, and um, and Diane did a lot of work to get that organized for herself. And we got to see the Innovation Center, and we got to see that plane mm -hmm. for us. Um, CAP was there. Uh, who else? We had several players there that will be there for our show. We so there. it was good. <laughs> what did you say? I said we, we were there. You yeah. were there. We, we, yeah. we did have Mach 7 Arrow there repping. Yeah. I appreciate the update, Steve. Um, anyone else have anything they want to yeah. chime in on here? Levi, anything you missed from you? Should be good. All right. Um, I've got a lot of future agenda items from this discussion, so we'll incorporate some things going forward. But for now, um, I'm going to call the meeting adjourned. Thanks, everybody. Mm -hmm.